Avion ennemi en approche Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today we're finally getting to the actually quick French destroyers because this is the tier 8, the Le Fantasque. Now the French weren't really building these things intentionally to be this quick but the French were in a little bit of an arms race with the Italians back in the days between the two wars because the general idea was that if war was to break out again, the British would take care of the Germans in the North Sea and, uh, well, in the Atlantic, whenever it came up, and the French would be dealing with the Italians in the Mediterranean. Well, as it turned out, nobody had foreseen that the Germans would actually not try to run through the forts, but go around them, but it's a different story then. It turned out the British needed to deal with the Italians and the Germans. So... At the time when these things were still designed, the French were looking at what the Italians were doing very closely and vice versa. Now the Italians were building large destroyers to the point that they actually came up with a thing that ended up being designated as a light cruiser, and that was the Condottieri class. And the French were concerned because these things had bigger guns and they were extremely quick in the water. So uh, the French decided to make their contre torpilleur still a little bit bigger and more powerful. And that's sort of where the Le Fantasque class of destroyers came from. They uh, turned out to be a lot faster than the French thought they would be. So they did put very powerful engines in them, but uh, they sort of designed them for upper 30 knot speeds. And it turned out that uh, during trials they could reach up to 45. Now the 45 knots was not their cruising speed or anything. And um, it wouldn't have probably been practical in battle to use that either, because they did suffer from a lot of issues, especially at higher speeds in terms of vibration, where it became very, very difficult to aim. Because the other problem that the French had was that the Italians were pretty good at aiming at long range. And that surprised the British at some points as well, that uh, the Italians could land accurate fire on target at ranges that uh, nobody really thought were practical. So... Uh, yeah, the, Fre the French did have to d did try to match that sort of thing, not just on the speed, which in all practical purposes wouldn't have been 45 knots during a battle. But the other very important thing that they were trying to build was a uh, was a remote controlled well were remote controlled turrets, so turrets that were directly controlled by the um, by the fire directors, which was a bit of a novelty in a ship that size at the time. Because uh, like while we were seeing things like radar-controlled fire later in the American designs, this was still a lot earlier than that, and they were still dealing with analog computers and uh, pretty bulky machinery to make that all happen. It didn't really work that well, uh, also due to manufacturing issues, because the French kind of weren't really used to building ships for a while and then had to pick it all up again. But um, uh, the they... They were designed to sort of compete with Italian light cruisers and, and stand up to them. Now, in the game, we are obviously not limited by any such funny factors like uh, realism or vibrations or any of these issues. And these things are proper fast. But before we get to that, 
uh, there's this one really one really like fun story that I wanted to include here because obviously these ships have a rapid reload and I've always sort of wondered okay how does a rapid reload work in practice like is there a real live uh, example to that or, or an equivalent of some sorts where you'd say yeah this is this is how a rapid reload sort of would have worked and the first time I came across that was actually when looking into the Le Fantasque design because the Le Fantasque had uh, uh, relatively rapid firing main guns so they would have been able to put a decent amount of uh, decent amount of lead out the problem were the ammunition hoists uh, because they had adapted those from the Duguay Trois, which were meant for slower firing guns and uh, just weren't powerful enough to deliver enough uh, ammunition for the turrets to fire at their full rate which then led to the French actually uh, stowing ready ammunition inside the turret, which is generally a dangerous idea. <laughs> the British had, had had a problem or two with that sort of thing. But um, the idea was that you'd have enough uh, ammunition actually inside the turret that uh, you could get a decent rate of fire out for a while before you had to you know, s slow down a bit and actually get the um, rely on the ammunition hoist to bring ammunition out through the barbettes and from the ammunition magazines, which obvious, for obvious reasons needed to be somewhat better protected down inside the ship. So this is, I think, what I've come so far as closest as to how a rapid reload would work. It's effectively, you know, over overcharge or overloading the guns or uh, getting the guns to fire at their po at their potential. Um, without relying on the ammunition hoist by just storing ammunition inside them. That, that, that was that, that was funny. But anyway, um, the Le Fantasque. This this ship is very very fast. Uh, let's let's have a quick look at, at the stats on this thing. So obviously you do get the engine boost and you get the rapid reload, as in in previous iterations. But um, the, yeah, the other thing you, that you're not getting, <laughs> you do get a lot of hit points, but what you're not getting is a lot of armor. So these things soak up damage like crazy. I mean, you don't get a huge amount of armor on destroyers anyway, but it can make a bit of a difference with the uh, slightly better armored ones, whereas these things are just big sponges. And um, that, funnily enough, is sort of, again, historically accurate because the French had issues, manufacturing issues with the steel, uh, that in, in that uh, they often had rust problems and pitting problems in in the plating that wasn't particularly thick to begin with but yeah it's all about the max speed so with this setup she has a base top speed of 46 knots which um, is entertaining <laughs> and in return the um, the base time to full speed isn't great and the you know the maneuverability isn't that great either Let, let's uh, let's have a look at a couple of comparisons and um, uh, let's check out some other tier 8 destroyers uh, and just see kind of how this how this uh, how this holds up here so let, for example let's say it's something that's I think relatively uh, relatively maneuverable I might be wrong here let's have a quick look yeah so so if you look at the the max uh, traverse speed um, on on say the lightning and uh, and the turn time and then you compare that to something like the Le Fantasque, it's a bit of a difference there are other destroyers like i think if you look at the japanese like if we look at the kagero that might be kagero is it kagero i don't i, I never know uh yeah so the kagero is still worse in terms of um traverse she's a bit faster on the rudder and uh faster on the definitely faster on the engines but uh, uh she doesn't turn very well either so uh, it's it's definitely not unheard of, um, and let's go back to the actual French ships. There we go. Uh, but but yeah, it's it's at the bottom. It's sort of at the bottom area of of the class. The guns are the guns are f difficult. <laughs> now they are good guns, right? These are 139 millimeter, so almost uh, almost cruiser caliber. And you've got five of them. You got kind of two super firing pairs, one forward, one aft, and one sort of uh, sitting, uh, one sort of sitting here in front of the um, in front of that bit of superstructure there towards the rear. Uh, the 5.5 second base reload is sort of on the lengthy side. 
but the range is excellent with over 10 kilometers and the fire chance with 5% is ridiculous. The HE is pretty good. The AP against at least against destroyers is good, but you can also use it at close ranges against other things like battleships pretty effectively. And the turret traverse is where it's really getting it's really get, becoming an issue because the base turret traverse is on par with uh, American heavy cruisers. <laughs> so uh, turning the ship around means that for a, for a good while you're not going to have your guns on target. And for a fast maneuvering destroyer, that is a bit of an issue. The torpedoes, the torpedoes are arranged in uh, in a single in a single 360 turret, uh, well, not turret, but uh, mount, and in two side mounts. So you can see them here. Uh, we've got we've got the one in the one towards the towards aft, which can fire both sides, and the other one, the other two are, are broadside mounted. So you can't get all three launchers on target. But uh, you actually have to turn the ship around to get the other side launcher off. Uh, these are um, not particularly long-range torpedoes with 6.6 .6 kilometers, but um, they're not bad, and you get nine of them. So if if the occasion occurs that you can find something in range that you can torpedo, then uh, you can donk some to it, some into them. But I would still say this is generally more of a gunboat, although with that speed you are certainly capable more capable of actually rushing rushing things and torpedoing them the bigger problem is to get away from them again in one piece because it's a very very big ship and will take a lot of damage uh, the aa is mostly absent and the surface detection is absolutely abysmal with 6.8 kilometers so this is really more a light cruiser it's a it's a sort of scout cruiser like intermediate thing between destroyers and cruisers and it makes sense because it was meant to 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 battle Italian light cruisers, like very light cruisers. So how have I set this thing up then? Um, you get two choices. You get either more, better speed and acceleration, or you get uh, a, a slightly faster reload and a better turret traverse speed. These are both great choices. So you can sort of do two things. You can do the more conservative long-range gunnery build, where... Um, where you just focus on kiting and trying to set fires and uh, not really focus on the speed of this thing. Or you can do what I've done <laughs> and just make this thing blisteringly fast to get you in range and be able to get up close and personal. Because the shell, the, the, the guns aren't, aren't ridiculously precise and the shells are on the slow side. So hitting enemy destroyers at range can get a little difficult. And uh, getting up close and personal ensures that you hit things, whereas with battleships it's not less of a problem because the HE will land on target even at 10 kilometers pretty well. So yeah, these are two choices, both great choices. It depends on what you want to set the ship up for. And now we get to the equipment. I would thoroughly recommend to use the main battery mod 1 in this thing because the turret traverse is absolutely dreadful. And um, you often find yourself fighting with two guns for half a minute until the other turrets have managed to get around. The second slot, uh, you diff, um, again, multi multiple options. Y you could go for steering gear mod one, or um, or you could use the uh, the propulsion modification for getting better um, better propulsion. Three point nine seconds on the rudder shift is on is kind of on the edge for what I would call acceptable for a destroyer. So both of them are are good options, and here once again. The traditional destroyer build would be the concealment system mod, and we can quickly do this just just to um, just to show you what that'll look like. So this gets we had what 6.8, and this gets us down to 6.16, which still means you can't outspot things, but it gives you around about 700 meters better uh, better concealment, which means you're a little bit sneakier, you're spotted a little bit later, um, and uh, you can theoretically stealth torp. Like, you know, if you set it up with camo and with the consumables, you may be able to get some stealth torps off, but I wouldn't rely on it because like 500 meters difference is just so little and these things are so quick <laughs> that uh, it would be very, very difficult to torpedo without being seen. But yeah, you could sort of do this thing. But um, uh, personally, what I have done is not do this and instead put the Propulsion Mod 2 in here <laughs> for more speed. <laughs> uh because we're, we're doing this with the Clarkson motto, power and speed. Okay, which gets the surface detection back up into cruiser ranges, but gets our main 
uh, our, our max speed on base up to 40, almost 46 knots. This is without the engine boost and the preheating running. With both, I think she can do over 55. Uh, there are probably torpedoes that are slower than this thing. <laughs> Actually, let's let's have a quick look. Um, uh, let's have a look at the uh, the Benham. I think the Benham probably takes the cake for the slowest torpedoes in game. Uh, 56.9. Okay, so almost. They're almost able to outrun Benham torpedoes. Okay, but uh, yeah, let's put that back into French, and we're looking back at this thing. So yeah. Uh, Two possible play styles, one being very, very quick and just running around and taking uh, and and brawling and blazing away. The other being more on the single focus, long range gunboat, kite sort of thing. Um, I personally prefer a more aggressive play style. Uh, you could even trade out the high grade coal here for surface detection for the preventative maintenance pack, but uh, it's not going to make a huge difference. But uh, given how much damage she takes, definitely also worth it. Commander-wise, uh, I actually have put a level 10 commander in here just to get the two relevant skills for the um, for the engine overload and for the rapid reload because these are really, really essential skills that you want to have in these things. Uh, nothing, nothing surprising in the early tiers. You do want a different, an additional rapid reload. Although let's have a very quick look at the Mogador and see how see how many how many rapid reloads she gets. Uh, she gets three, so you, you, that would get you up to four. But um, I think four rapid reloads are okay, uh, you, especially with the tendency of of uh, higher tier games to go into seven minutes. I think you can totally still use uh, four rapid reloads. Uh, exploit weakness makes sense for something that has a 5% fire chance. And um, uh, the adrenaline rush sort of makes sense as well. If you're playing very aggressively, they don't have smokes anyway, so there's not much point in that. The two definite skills are, that I must have is the engine overload for longer duration and shorter cooldown, and the same thing for the master reloader. So uh, very, very important skills for that. If you are so inclined, you could get yourself the historical camo, which gives you range on the main batteries, which supports sort of the, uh, the gunboat kite long range style. It gives you also torpedo range, which gives you a bit of an option to play Okay, if you did a stealth setup to give you to do the occasion, occasional stealth, uh, it gives max traverse speed, which is much appreciated, and surface detection. So this is an all-around good package if you want to get it. But as usual, um, given that it costs three thousand five hundred gold, which is uh, more than I spent yesterday on uh, on gambling Friesland crates, <laughs> it's a significant amount of money that occasionally goes into that. Um, you'd really have to like the ship to do this sort of thing. So we are sailing with the more or less free uh, camo because honestly silver is is ubiquitous all right i think that covers about it so let's get into some games our first battle is a tier 9 game and uh, we have an enemy implacable in at, at least it's a tier 8 uh, lion richelieu gascogne rune cleveland uh, ron actually cleveland and a fenyang on the enemy team and it's the atlantic uh, interesting map um, can can get can get hairy if the team is bad in positioning. But we do have carriers, and there's only one destroyer in the enemy team, so it shouldn't be too bad. Now, um, with with a speed of well, you, you'll see it in a second, but the, an initial speed of over 50 knots. Uh, this thing is obviously very suited towards scouting. So I've got a, um, a Friedrich here, and uh, we will see where the carrier goes. And I'm trying not to go where the carrier goes. So I'm not actually going full speed at this point, but I'm probably still faster than most of the rest of the team. <laughs> and this thing goes 25 knots on half speed. There are American battleships at this tier that are not actually at lower tier that, um, that, that, that cannot reach that on full speed. So anyway, uh, carrier is going the other direction. So uh, we're heading. Go we're going to head towards that island because there's generally something around there that uh, that needs shooting. Uh, and yeah, 55.6 knots with the engine boost running, and the uh, um, the preheating skill active. And once that drops off, we're going down to 54. But uh, yeah, I am switching to AP because we haven't spotted the enemy destroyer quite yet. And um, it looks like uh, we're doing a bit of a split. So we've got one cruiser keeping one cruiser and a battleship keeping the center. I've got the f I think it was a Friedrich following me around here, 
So uh, the carrier is focusing on the other half, which means I'm on scouting duty. And even though, okay, there's the Cleveland. I don't want to be where the Cleveland is. And there's the lion. So back to the high explosive. He hasn't spotted me yet, but he might be coming this way. So um, I'm not sure if he is, but let's open up and drop some torpedoes in his direction. The torpedoes can't reach him from here, but if, uh, if he sails forward, then he might be sailing into them. And they, they reload pretty quickly. So it's really not a big loss if he doesn't. I think he's actually in reverse. Uh, and yeah, obviously shooting high explosive at me, which is a bit of an issue because yeah, <laughs> that happens. Uh, these things hurt and uh, tend to have the high explosive preloaded. Okay, uh, the carrier is coming now that the carrier knows where I am. Seems to be coming after me. Uh, actually, no, it looks like he's hitting our battleship. But um, okay, we've lost our Charles Mattel. Uh, that's not a good start to to the to the group on the other side. But uh, there's still two battleships on that flank, and we've still got the cruiser here in the center. There is, there, we have spotted the destroyer, so um, so that's a good thing. And uh, I'm trying to, at this point, just you know keep my range open because that's a lion. It's a British battleship. Uh, you do not want these things shooting at you. And um, he's not shooting at me, so I can see if I can set him on fire. Maybe. Okay, there's a fire. See, damaconing it. Okay, he is damaconing it. So. Um, Let's already trigger the rapid reload. Could have waited a second, but I don't. Uh, there's a carrier coming, and I don't know if I still get the chance to do this again. And hopefully, I might get a, one or two perma fires. But it looks like the lion is getting away with it. And yeah, the carrier is definitely dropping me, so I am gonna have to start dodging torpedoes in a second here. Okay, there come the torpedo bombers. So full speed ahead, and um, we're gonna get out of this one. And the second one is obviously waiting for me to do the turn and doing the drop. So uh, level her out, speed up, and I think I just took one there. Yeah, uh, carriers will have, a f will have a field day trying to hit these things because you, they are um, just a fair bit quicker than anything else. Now the Cleveland has managed to, to kill the Taka with her secondaries. Um, I, I have no idea what's going on there, but uh, it looks like uh, we have completely lost our center. Which means I now need to I now need to head back and uh, and fight a Cleveland because <laughs> otherwise we we we're not we don't have a chance in hell. I don't know what uh, yeah this uh, this doesn't look good already because the uh, the Friedrich der Große here is is getting hammered by a British battleship and by the carrier, which means he's on perma fire and flooding, which means he's pretty much dead alone. Uh, there's nothing I can do because uh, I, I can't I can't. Um, I can't leave the carrier to his fate, otherwise we'll just lose to the Cleveland capping. And the Cleveland is on relatively low hit points, fortunately. I just need to get in range. Now the carrier is obviously... Uh, yeah, we've lost our battleship already. Uh, we're down three kills. Um, three kills to none. <laughs> Let's see what the rest of the gang is doing. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if our carrier is still actually doing something, or if he's just given up on life and is waiting for the Cleveland to kill him. But uh, I am now chasing a Cleveland, a destroyer, which is generally a, a terrible idea, but I've got two things going for me. And yes, I had to take that torp drop from the carrier because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get in, in range. And I am trying furiously to save our Lexington here. But, uh, well, I've got two things going for me. First of all, it's a French destroyer and it can actually uh, output a decent amount of uh, fire. And second of all, the Cleveland isn't shooting at me because he is brawling the carrier, who, uh, yeah, I think has just rolled over and is accepting his fate. Uh, and I think it's actually the enemy carrier that takes him out, uh, which leaves, um, oh, me and one, no, no, it's the Cleveland, okay. Me and one uh, one battleship, So and we still haven't killed anybody, so that, let's see uh, if we can if we can deny them the Ruffle Stomp medal at least, and, and get I, I can get away with my honor intact here, because the Cleveland is capping. I can't get any closer, because the Cleveland is going to one-shot me. I'm on, I'm on under 6,000 hit points, and I'm, I'm out of heals. Uh, so I'm just dropping these torpedoes to get him out of the way and uh, just trying to shoot him or gun him down really. The carrier is still coming in, so I am still also having to uh, to drop, uh, having to dodge uh, carrier drops. So once again, just uh, steady her out and oh, he takes one, he gets one hit in, which means it's a it's a flood by my Damacons almost off cooldown. Okay, got him. So I'm at 800 hit points. Uh, the dive bombers, I think, have missed Cleveland shooting at me, but the Cleveland has a similar problem that I have. His guns are taking a while to get here, and it's another fire on the Cleveland. And uh, I think at this point, I mean, we've lost anyway, so uh, I might as well use my, my, my remaining rapid reload. Oh, one hit from the Cleveland, I'm on 270, the carrier has missed me again. <laughs> and the Cleveland just can't hit me because I'm, well, not sitting still and I am actually too fast. 
and uh, I want that Cleveland dead. Let's, uh, and then I'm, then I can die happily. <laughs> That's just the last thing I want to do. Come on, come on, die you you cruiser. Come on, one more. Yes, <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Ruffle stop medal denied. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm I'm the only one left against the old enemy team. There's the lion shooting at me. Let's see if he gets me. No, he missed. <laughs> but uh, the Richelieu from the other side takes me out. So uh, <laughs> there's that for it. But yeah. Uh, you, you do have the advantage that um, you are quite, especially on a speed build, that you're quite a bit quicker than anything else that these people are generally facing. So carriers tend to have a quite a hard time to hitting you with torpedo bombers because, well, they just need to estimate uh, how far ahead you are, actually. And um, if I come on top of the team with 29,000 points of damage done <laughs> then, and the only kill in the game, then, uh, yeah, that also tells you something. All right. Let's do another one. In the second battle, we are on Haunted Seas, which is a map that I really enjoy. And we're playing Domination, uh, as is traditional life. I don't even know if Haunted Seas has any non-domination modes. But uh, we're in a T8 game up against Kansas, North Carolina, Roma, uh, Charles Martel, and Öland, and Akatsuki, and a Jervis. All right, then. Let's go. Um, you you may think that, uh, that the Le Fantasque is very very dangerous to enemy destroyers because of the rapid reload but you you have no other utility so if they smoke up there's very little you can do and your maneuverability is not great so uh, in destroyer brawls you do have to be a bit careful but yes given that we're up against three destroyers and it's a domination map definitely loading the armor piercing waiting for the guns to slowly turn around such that we can get them all on target and uh, uh, no carriers so i am just going to rush ahead and rush that cap and just get in there and uh, see that, well, see that I can spot things for uh, for that uh, Shapayev behind me because the Maya seems to have, was that a Maya? Uh, whatever that was, uh, seems to be heading over to A Cup and it looks like our other destroyer at A Cup has no interest in playing the game and actually capturing, you know, capturing capture circles, which is generally a great idea. Uh, the team even calls it out, but um, yeah, destroyer says, no, I'm not interested. Meanwhile, <laughs> I've gotten C. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know if we're alone here. I, there could be another ship in here with me, and I wouldn't know by now. So we'll just inch around the, the corner here and uh, and check where we're going. Uh, is there someone? Yep, okay. It's the Charles Martel and the Jervis, so it could have been better. The Martel I could have done without. Okay, fire off at the Jervis and just get as many shots as possible into that thing. Martel hasn't been paying attention. Uh, Jervis probably has torpedoes away, so I'm just going to drop something in that general direction. Maybe it hits. We never know. But I uh, can't see the Jervis anymore, and um, now obviously I can't get my guns around because I need to turn and dodge the Jervis torps that are coming. I'm not even sure if these are Jervis torps or if these are Charles Martel torps. Could be, could have just been the Martel do dropping me. Nah, I think this is Jervis. Okay, I should be able to... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to outrun these. But now I have a Charles Martel on my tail, which is a bad thing. And um, where's my support? Uh, yeah, the Charles Martel also has the same problem that um, has the same problem that the carrier was having earlier, in that um, I am this this much quicker <laughs> than your normal destroyer, because uh, this is not just a Le Fantasque, this is a speed built Le Fantasque. So um, even though I'm playing without the historical camo, uh, yeah, this this thing is rapid, but um, I, I really uh, I really don't want to tangle with the Charles Martel because that thing has rapid firing guns as well. And I'm just trying to get a permafire, but it seems like RNG says no, you're not getting a permafire today. Uh, Charles Martel Torps should be able to dodge those without problems. Uh, yeah, and yeah, he he he's still he's still way off tr way off target, uh, trying to shoot me. Oh, the Akatsuki is here as well, um, and the Jervis is popping up again in front of us for a second there. Uh, yeah, there are torpedoes. So okay, looks like we're dealing with destroyers again. Back to the armor piercing. And uh, I don't know where that Jervis went, honestly. He's probably behind one of the islands. Uh, but uh, the Asashio has joined us over here. I don't know why. But um, okay, it would have been great. But we, we've got a cup. We've got two cups. We're, uh, we're one, kill, one kill each. So okay, there comes the Akatsuki. So I need to break because he's going to have torpedoes away. And yeah, there they come. That was that was pretty obvious. I was just shooting the dropping the torpedoes here in that direction in the case that he was trying to dodge my torpedoes. But uh, it looks like he isn't actually dodging, <laughs> which uh, which makes these quite 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 unsuccessful. But uh, we've got the Shapayev, I think, shooting at the Akatsuki now as well. So if we can get this guy killed, 
Uh, that would be great. Now, the, again, the French guns don't work too well at long range against fast-moving targets. Uh, they take an awful lot of time to get there, and they are not particularly precise. But if we can get that Akatsuki kill, because it looks like our Sashio came over here to this cup. Uh, you know, our Sashio had only battleships to torpedo on the other side, because all the destroyers were here. And... Um, uh, or almost all of them. And the... Uh, so he came all the way over here to get into a close-range fight with the Charles Martel, the only cruiser on the enemy team. And... Uh, predictably, he died. Okay, these are um, these are Akatorps. Uh, I'm just gonna switch on the engine boost. All right, we're one kill behind, but uh, we're leading still in caps. I should be able to just outrun these. Uh, we're leading in caps now. I don't know if the Shapayev can do something about the Charles Martel, but um, we need to kill something, and we need to secure maybe secure this cup because we are going to probably lose over around a cup. I'm not sure about that, but that North Carolina looks like a good target. So we're gonna start blasting away at him. And uh, we are still ahead on points, but I think, uh, yeah, the destroy there's a uh, one of the destroyers is back in A cup, so uh, we're probably going to lose A cup soon. So I do have to get B cup, and we are even in the process of losing C. So um, yeah, that that uh, NC needs to die, and I actually need to go into the cup. So I can't do this from the other side because I'm not just confident that my torpedoes can actually one shot him. Uh, I, I do need to get into the cap, so that's a permafire. Yeah, he's seen me, he's shooting at me. So, um, since he's not moving, and I'm the only thing he has to shoot at, uh, I am sort of thinking if he's gonna turn his guns around, but let's find out. Um, uh, we've lost we've lost A cup and C cup, and um, I, I appear, I don't know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but a second ago I had a team still. Uh, <laughs> where did that happen? How did that all go so wrong? Okay, NC. Does he have the armor piercing loaded? And uh, Yes, he does. Okay, so I survived that shot. Uh, that's the secondaries. And uh, my torpedoes were already reloaded, so now I just need to uh, turn the ship around. And yeah, obviously I'm getting shot at by everybody from... Because <laughs> I'm suddenly the only one left alive. Uh, and I don't know how that happened, but I think I can get this NC still. And there she goes. Okay, so yeah. But now I'm one against four and we've got a minute left. And there's a Charles Martel, and at some point he's going to figure out that I'm a bit faster than he thought I was going to be. So yeah, I'm trying to dodge these shots now. He's still going. He's still going, going, going wide. Uh, come on, you can do it. One more fire, and he got me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, for a second there, we um, I had three teammates, <laughs> and, and then I came around an island, and then I was alone. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Such such is life. But uh, yes, what you can do with the Le Fantasque and what this ship really excels is things like cap control, uh, because you are just this quick in uh, you are just this quick in getting getting from one side to the other, and uh, you know being where you're supposed to be. Where she's not excelling particularly, she can deal with destroyers relatively well if they are um, accommodating let's say. So if they are sailing broadside on uh, just right next to you for an extended period of time, not shooting their guns, trying to torpedo you. If you're up against other gunboat destroyers, you will take a lot of damage in these things. And um, I would really say it's not the primary purpose of this ship. Uh, I think the primary purpose of this ship is to be where it's meant to be, try to set fires, uh, try to be a gunboat and use the occasional torpedo drop and just run circles around everything. Uh, try to maintain cups. One of the problems you get out of the speed, by the way, is if you're, for example, playing in an, an epicenter map, it is relatively easy to not pay attention for half a minute and then be, then be at the edge of a map. <laughs> because because this thing is just so darn quick that you can just run out of the space where you're supposed to be controlling so quickly. So, um, yeah. Is this a great tier 8 destroyer? Um, not really, I'd say. Uh, there are, she's not a bad ship, definitely not a bad ship. Uh, she's better than the Le Terrible, actually, the premium version, which existed previously. <laughs> it still does, but which was introduced way, way back. So uh, that one's been a bit power crept, but um, it's not a bad ship, but don't expect her to work every single time. Uh, once, the, once the line will be out and carrier players actually get used to the speed on these things, uh, you will be taking a lot more damage from airplanes because today that um, everybody just keeps dropping their shells short because you're just this much faster than than they assumed you do, you would be. 
but still um it can be a, it can be like an entertaining meme boat of sorts so um uh, yeah that's the thing you can do and yes just just zip to the caps if you need to be and uh, and do what you need to do but uh yeah that's that's what that is uh okay i think that's it for today uh i will still be looking at the mogador but I haven't even tested that thing yet, and I, I am extremely busy once again these weeks. So uh, I'll, I'll see. We've got Italian battleships, I think, coming up next week. So don't expect me to actually have a review for them next week, because I still need to test play them and then record them and do some research. But maybe the week after we might get into that, depending on when I can get them, can get my hands on them. Anyway, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.